Well, good morning. This is another day here in the Twisted Knot Woodshop. And this is kind of a different sort of a day as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've never had to repair a shotgun before. Uh, a friend of mine said this shotgun had a little bit of history to it. He was telling me on the phone, and I said, oh, and he said, yeah. And I said, what's wrong with it? He said, it's kind of broke. I said, all right. Well, what do you mean by that? He says, well, my great-grandfather had it, and he, or someone, had, um, must have ran out of shells or something and um, ended up beating a porcupine with it and broke the stock. And I said, well, that sounds interesting. Well, he brings it here, and <clears throat> you know that gray or greenish packing tape? It's, you know, the plasticky stuff, like all packing tape. Well, that was wrapped around the the what would be the broken end to kind of hold it together and um so i peeled that off and uh opened it up and discovered that the stock had been cracked and broken in three different spots mainly the the, the butt end here and uh, some pieces ended up being missing and you can see where somebody had put a gusset on there uh, in several locations. I'm sure that wasn't stock with the unit. So the whoever had it, there's another one there and yet another one there. And his great-grandfather decided that well we'll put these little straps on here and maybe we'll hold it and somebody down the road apparently tried to fix it and quit. And so for the last little bit I've been cleaning off the uh, remnants of that green or gray or whatever the hell color it is packing tape off of the stock and uh, I used lacquer thinner and I th this lighting is not very good with this but you can see the the lighted areas there as opposed to the checkering here so I still got some cleaning up there to do but I'm close enough to do what I'm going to do next which is fill all of these holes like that one there underneath that metal piece and then this big gaping gash over here and I suppose I suppose I could sit down on a with a walnut board and sand on it until um, uh, whenever and get enough dust to fill that but I came up with another idea and I was sitting here thinking I said well how in the world can I create a bunch of dust fast so I remembered that at the house we had a have a uh, a spice grinder, so I went to the planer. Now you're going to see this at the very same time I do. Uh, Lee Waterman, that's a shout out to you. Um, I'm going to take. I went to the planer, plane some walnut down, and now I'm going to take the shavings that I swept off the floor, stick them into this spice grinder, and let's see what happens. Now remember. I have not tried this before. This was just a brainiac idea I had. I'm not even sure it's going to work. All right, got the lid, stick it on there. It's plugged in. Here I go. I wouldn't imagine that planer shavings would be any coarser than, say, you know, thyme or oregano. Oog I have no idea how long it takes. Oh, look. <laughs> Go a little bit longer. Okay, well there it is. Uh, my, my walnut spice ground up. Let's try it again. With a, that way you can see me load it. Planer shavings, nothing but planer shavings. Load it into the spice grinder. How much planer shavings go into this? I have no idea. Um, wing it. How long to let it go? No idea. 
That seems about so I gotta go through three different tunes in that amount of time. So write that down. I know, it's boring. <coughs> Excuse me. But the wait, the time, the wait time is, and the, and the end result is what's the exciting part. Appears to be coarser than the last batch. All right, there you go. Almost uh, not sanding salt or sanding dust, but certainly mixable with glue and I think it's going to be pretty darn close. We'll show you that down the road, but that my little stupid idea seemed to have worked out okay. We'll pick this up later. <clears throat> okay, welcome back. Well, for the past few minutes, I've, well, 10 or 15, I've been cleaning out the uh, cavity here uh, with those missing chunks being wherever they are and I've used uh, dental tools and yeah um, I gotta tell you if, if you're in a shop and it doesn't matter how busy you are whether you're a weekender or a professional it doesn't matter um, you need dental tools because there are so many things you can do with them um, and so helpful uh, with things like this and the easiest place to get them is to your dentist. Go there and say, hey doc, uh, when you shit can uh, your tools, can you let me know and, and save them for me and I'll come get them. Especially if you have kids. You know, if you have three kids and they all go to the same dentist, well then by God the son of a bitch owes you something. So say, give me some of your dental tools. And there's a bunch of them, or I have a bunch of them. Um, can you see what I'm saying? Uh, there's all different. Some of them are the duplicates, but the um, <clears throat> the the favorites are the ones that have sharp edges on them, like this fellow here. Um, you can it's got a really sharp edge. You can dig in, and occasionally I find myself taking a Dremel tool and resharpening it. But uh, but other ones have different you know uh, cranks and crooks, and this one here is a flat spadey type. Like a circular, I don't know if you can see that too well. Um, let me put them over here. Mm, nope. But it, it looks like a little circle, and uh, that works pretty well. The other end got broke off uh, digging into something. And then there's some others that are more stiffer. But 
if you don't have any, you got to go get them because they are they just do so much for you. All right, so I've got the the ground up uh, walnut spice here, and it's time to mix it up. So the what uh, what you do is I use a plastic Tupperware thing. Um, and get your trusty bottle of glue, throw it in there. What you want is a consistency of, of, uh, oh, uh, kind of light peanut butter, maybe, is a good, is a good um, good description or good end result um, in this case yeah something similar to that right there and the next ingredient kind of mix it up See, I'm seeing the same thing you are. Um, kind of mix it up. Remember, this is you know you got set time galore on this stuff, so you got plenty of time to mess around. Actually, this it when it sets up a little bit more, uh, meaning it won't flow or you know pool. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, hang on a second. I gotta go. I got one little ingredient. I'm gonna put this on pause. Okay. The next ingredient is <clears throat> you can see the uh, mixture there is kind of bland. Uh, in this case, lighter by much. So what we do is going to add a little of stain to it. Mix it up. Spill it all over your hand. And if you look at the color of the, uh, the mixture here, and pretend it's setting, by the time this, this will cure out a little bit lighter in color. Uh, but I think that's pretty close. And clean your hands off. And the best applicator in the world, if unless your wife is a is a um, cake decorator, they have what they call icing spatulas, which is a little narrow thing, and it's got a little you know a little flappy deal on it. Well, next thing best to that is a popsicle stick. I'm gonna be like Jimmy Diresta. Pick up your goop. Stick it in there. Take your second popsicle stick and use it as a, a pushy as a pushy thing. Now remember you're trying to fill that cavity, so you're gonna have to or excuse me, I'm talking third person. I have to fill this cavity, so I gotta push it in there.
the scanner on, I'm sorry. Hang on. Sorry about that. Alright, so I've got to work from both sides here. Um, the other side that you can't see over here has a cavity as well. And So I gotta push it through from the other side. All it's taken is, for the most part, um, pushing it in so that when you see it bulge out, if I push in from the other side, you can see it bulge out from this side, or vice versa, then you know you've got the hole, in this case, filled in. Try to keep your, try to keep it so you don't build it up too much so there's just too much sanding or grind it down because when this cures or when this it's just regular PVA glue by the way nothing fancy tight bond too okay alright now and you use your popsicle stick as a as a spatula to form it down. See, I can see it bulging out here as I press on this side. Can you still see with that lamp in the way? No? Nope. Yeah, you can. Try to keep your perimeter cleaned up so that you don't have to do much sanding with that. And if you hold your mouth just right, you can use your finger to kind of smooth it down. Oops. You see a little divot there that can use a little extra. Alright, then you can use your finger to to uh, kind of press it and because the flat stick does good in getting it in there but you can use your finger to conform it to conform to form it to uh, what would be the in this case the radius of the stock here whereas that stick you know you could get close but and I'm sure that this would probably work in the same fashion, you know, with uh, with other uh, repairs, meaning, you know, a spindle or something, just kind of do the same thing. And if you look at it, you can see, I mean, down, down, 
down that direction, if you look at it, you can see where it's bulging, where it needs to get pushed in or, or, or uh, removed. Okay, well, I'll pick this up um, when we get back to uh, seeing how it looks after it's dried up and sanded. Talk to you later. Okay, it's been a couple of days now since I put the glue in the cavities of this gun stock. And the reason I've waited this long is I wanted to make sure that the glue and the stain has set uh, good enough to continue on with the next step and if you remember I showed you where all of those mending plates had been uh, mortised into the stock and the screws uh, there were four of them two on this side and two on the other so that's that would be these two uh, elongated sections here and this was the section that was missing from the stock after it got used as a porcupine club um, and same with this one and um, so now the next step since it's cured properly is to uh, take and grind it down and uh, most people I suppose you could if you didn't have a, a decent little grinder like I'm fixing to show you you know you could sand it but uh, it'd be a you'd be you'd, you'd be sanding into the field of the stock and that would take away a lot from the antiquity of the of the uh, finish as it is I kind of cleaned it up a bit um, with lacquer thinner and the stock is a whole lot more blondish and lighter colored than what it was um, that you seen earlier and the only reason I did that is because when I used the lacquer thinner to clean off all that green tape that packing tape that um, it had taken away from the finish of here so I just did the rest of it so it would all be the same and by the time I get done putting the stain on it uh, back to uh, or uniform stain it should be pretty darn close now grinding this down I'm going to use a Dremel tool with a um, 90 degree head on it and a cutoff disc and this is a pretty thin little guy, but uh, it works good for this because it's, you can easily control it. So we're going <clears> to <throat> take and keep saying we, I'm the only guy in here. Um, so I'm going to take and grind this down and try to form it in there so that I barely, if at all, touch the, the field of the stock. By the way, if you don't have one of these Dremel tools with this little guy, go get one. It's so easily controlled, provided you have a steady hand. The idea is not to get it, not to rake it up against the metal part of the of the frame here because well you don't want to shine that up By the way, this is Sunday, May the 13th, 2016, Daylight Savings Time Day.
hit that trigger. see the the big difference there between that one that has not been touched and this section here that has just been ground and then the shiny part of the field of the original stock will get blended in here just a bit with regular sandpaper that you do by hand and I'll pick this up when I get further on down the road well good morning this is the next episode in this shotgun repair here at the Twisted Knot Woodshop. And today is March uh, 14th, 2016. And yesterday, uh, I mistakenly said it was May. I don't know where that came from. But you were watching me um, grind down the filler that was in all of these mending plates and those gaping gashes um, that were in the stock and I did not video the other three grinding them down because who wants to watch a a uh, repeat like that so many times and after I was done and then hand sanded it to make it smoother I put the stain on it which is a custom mix of it's an ace uh, oil-based stain, uh, golden oak, but it's custom mixed to um, um, kind of a medium walnut color. Uh, but anyway, so it's um, was applied to that, and then the four-stock there, which is kind of neat. Uh, it's got this little lever here that uh, you lift up to pull it away from the barrel there and the finish I'm putting on there is a varathane product called spar urethane yes it says outdoor but all guns should be outdoors when you're using them I'm hoping and um, uh, and the reason I'm using this is because I've had good luck with on um, with on using it on uh, various products product. boy I'm doing, I'm batting a thousand projects, and um, so I'm hoping it's going to do well here. So let's um, get set up. I'm going to put you in the tripod. And get 
lower down here. And uh, I'm applying it with one of these foam applicators with a rag close by to uh, kind of kind of uh, keep it off of the metal as much as I can. And uh, this stuff is kind of thin, so I don't want to um, get you know too much on it so that it because ultimately when it's done it's going to be standing up like this to dry so that way I don't have any fancy holding uh, procedures but let's um I'm going to start this way um, when I was putting stain on <coughs> excuse me when I was putting the stain on I noticed that the wood really took it nicely uh, I don't know whether it was thirsty or what but it sure did um, sure did make it nice and also I noticed on the can that this stuff does not uh, can go on metal as well. I don't know if I'm going to be <laughs> coating all the metal with it, but it, you'll notice that it's getting on. Can you notice? Yeah, you'll notice that it's getting on the butt plate there. <laughs> he said butt plate. Um, <laughs> I'll wipe that off here in just a second. The idea is not to put a whole bunch of this on, it's just, and then stroke out your finish in nice long, nice long uh, direction there. Got this little brass plate there in the on the uh, bottom of the stock. I don't know. I'm assuming it maybe it had initials in it. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Right now it has nothing, um, or maybe just a design feature. That looks pretty good. It's always nice to run your brush from one direction plumb to the end of whatever it is. That way you don't have any stop and start marks. Yes, this is varathane and or uh, basically polyurethane to a certain degree. However, um, it doesn't mean that uh, that you can uh, just turn your mind on it or off of it. You gotta make sure you don't have any runs or any dry spots like I had one right there and then just run your brush out and the reason I'm using this foam applicator is because I can ease it more easily uh, dance up to the metal parts and get in between them and not have a big glove of the finish on the metal. Remember I was telling you that this thing's going to be hanging on a wall so I'm not able to bring those fill areas um, into color I'll certainly not be able to match the grain. Um, but 
since it's going to be hanging on the wall, I think it'll be fine. He's not overly, oh, what do you want to say, concerned that he's ever going to use it again. Like I said, he just wants it as a display item. Alright, that looks pretty good there. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to try to get this cut in here. Alright. Now the This is pretty wood. I don't. It's a kind of a burl. Uh, uh, it's a walnut um, fashion. I don't know. Oops. I don't know. It's not black walnut, but could be English, especially since this gun was made in England. So I'm I'm gonna go with that. This is kind of difficult to hold up because of I'm holding the barrel of a shotgun and then trying to keep it the finished part off the deck of the workbench. Oops. I got that plumb on the metal. Dummy. Alright, I'm going to take it into the finish room, set him down, and then let him set for 24 hours. The finish, I mean, and then give it a light sanding and then put the second coat on. We'll see you guys after the finish process is all done. Okay, here we are the next day. This is March um, the 15th, and... Yesterday I was telling you about how we put the, well you've seen where I put the first coat of of uh, the varathane on there, or the urethane, excuse me, and earlier in a previous video I said where these filled marks would get blended in, but what I did not um, uh, expound on was how I was going to do that. And I've already done this one here, and you can see by the by looking at those two, maybe, yeah, right there, you can see how that one here is lighter in color than that one. And I've already sanded the butt of the stock um, uh, down to uh, for the next coat, but I wanted to get the magic blending tool. Um, to take away all of this this lighter colored stuff and between this one and this one like I said I've already done this one and what do I use nothing more than a marker um, you take the 
because I wanted that marker to go on top of the finish coat that was on there because I did not want the <clears throat> marker to be absorbed into the wood so much that it would be splotchy with the coat of uh, urethane on there it would uh, set on top of it and then the next coat of urethane will go over that so you can sit here and you can watch this happen and the color has changed dramatically and I might have to come back and put a second coat on it so I'll just flip it over and do the other side while I'm waiting for that to do its thing This one here has actually turned out to be looking pretty darn good. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's do this guy one more time. Yeah, so it's almost, I don't know, can you see it? By the time the finish gets on the top of this, I think it'll blend in really nice with the with this darkened spot here where the checkering is. All right, so there's no sense in you watching me throw another coat of finish on this. I'll throw it on and tomorrow, this is uh, nine o'clock, almost straight up in the morning here and tomorrow morning I'll put the bring it out and it'll be out the door I'll call him up and he can come get it all right I'll show you what it looks like uh, tomorrow when it's when the finish is done thanks for watching all right here we are at the next day and I brought the shotgun from the finish room and I've got back here on the workbench and um, I don't know about the rest of you guys but um, when I'm Get into the process of finishing something I put down a, a carpet pad uh, sometimes this type is referred to as a rebond because it's got all these little bits and pieces in here that are glued together and you can get them at carpet shops for darn near next to nothing um, I've got it so that it's about a foot short of my workbench here uh, which is in this case is seven well my workbench is eight foot but I brought it out and the next step, and I didn't video this because I probably thought that you didn't need to see how to put on wax, but I'll show you the wax I did use. It's Brie wax and it's dark brown. And for anybody that's, you know, uh, woodworking, you should have a couple of different uh, cans of this uh, sitting around your shop. This is really good stuff. Um, it's uh, beeswax base, um, and it's uh, just ultimate good. Um, so what I did was I just spread it on the stock and the forearm here. And if I turn the shotgun over, you can see the... Now I didn't go to any trouble sanding out all these little, these little divots here or any of the imperfections that was in the wood. I mean this thing is from 18 
late 1880s and so to make it look like a new gun that would be kind of kind of silly but you can see a nice little you know ding there and as far as matching it i think it came as close as i possibly could as far as the you know the the color from around the the region there and yes you can see some you know some bland spots in there but i just couldn't help that if i had had the other pieces that were missing i probably could have done a better job but i didn't so anyway there it is it's a done deal the guy can come pick it up at any time that he uh that he uh wants to and um so it's a it's another project out of the shop thanks for watching and we'll pick up something else down the road when something else comes more interesting later